Hello everyone, so happy to bring you all another one of these videos because I love getting excited and I love watching movies. And what's even better is that I love getting excited about watching new movies. And I can't sugarcoat it when I say this is going to be one of the most insane years for movies. An insane year for the wonderful entertainment and pop culture we all love and adore. I honestly couldn't be more excited to share with you all the movies I'm excited to see this year. And I will be honest and say it was very hard to come up with this list and include everything. Seriously, the amount of movies I want to see this year and that I'm excited for could have warranted a three hour video, but gotta stick with my guns. And by that, I mean instead of bringing you 10 most anticipated films, I'm giving you my top 20, that's right, top 20 most anticipated movies of 2022. But first, just because I love you guys, I'll only give you four honorable mentions because this is a huge list, but enjoy the ride my friends. Disclaimer, because of our ever-changing world, these release dates are subject to change. Scream, I cannot wait to check this out. I don't have as much nostalgia for it, but that trailer reminded me why I love horror movies. I do remember really enjoying the original when I saw it, but I can't wait to revisit it and see a great slasher in this day and age. Sonic the Hedgehog 2, the first movie was a big surprise for me. Had so much fun with it, and I can't wait to see Sonic play off of his other iconic counterparts. Hocus Pocus 2, the original is a delight and I cannot wait to see the Sandersons back in another bonkers installment. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, yes the first is wacky and maybe was too much in that regard for a lot of people's tastes. I'm a fan of this character and I thought the spectacle brought this portion of the DC universe to life in a spectacular fashion. I just can't wait to see James Wan direct a grander and more adventurous sequel compared to the first, and Jason Momoa is always killing it play this pretty fantastic iteration of Arthur Curry. Number 20, Everything Everywhere All at Once. This new film from A24 looks like an absolutely bananas take on the multiverse concept, and I just love the energy that's being brought to this film. This is being directed by Daniels, who also directed another recent favorite of mine in Swiss Army Man. Which I believe, like that movie, this next film is going to be just as quirky, if not more. It'll still bring about those same emotional pulls that make us care about all of these characters. Number 19, Prey. I was so excited to hear the announcement of there being a Predator prequel developed in this day and age. And while it'll only be streaming exclusively on Hulu, I still can't wait to see how the world of Predator will expand and maybe bring about interesting stuff we didn't know about the Predator species or planet. I'm also excited that Dan Trachtenberg will be directing since his love of sci-fi thrillers shine through brilliantly in 10 Cloverfield Lane. It could be as campy as the Predator sequels, but I have a really good feeling about this being a serious, tension-filled sci-fi that will remind us why we love the original so much. Number 18, Nope. Jordan Peele is no doubt a tremendous director, creating two phenomenal horror films, and I can't wait to be left freaked out and thinking about this new film like I did with both Get Out and Us. I'm sure when we see more of it, we'll be pleasantly surprised about the film that we're in for. Number 17, Avatar 2. I don't think I've seen a release date for a movie pushed so many times in my life, but I will say that in spite of what some may think of the original Avatar, whether it was too generic or derivative with its plot, and far too removed from the pop culture landscape, I really enjoy the first movie. Like a lot. Sure, there are elements of the story that don't gel with me, but I still am left in awe by the imagination put into it by James Cameron and crew. It's a pretty amazing filmmaking feat, and what excites me so much about the sequels is that who knows where the story could go, and not to mention how breathtaking the creations of these movies will be. I'm so excited to see how everything pans out, and if I'm one of the only people excited to see it, so be it. Number 16, Disenchanted. As a fan of Disney, I'm honestly so excited to see a sequel to Enchanted come to life in this day and age. The first movie honestly felt like a love letter to Disney films, and I just know that this new film can lift the spirits in as much of a wondrous fashion as its predecessor. Not to mention, the first movie was one of the cases where the animated characters transported to New York City plot actually worked, and it was quite a charming and fun film. I can't wait to revisit the original and have fun with this new continuation. Number 15, Mission Impossible 7. One of my favorite franchises and quite possibly my second favorite espionage franchise right behind James Bond. 
Tom Cruise is still an absolute powerhouse, and these recent sequels have honestly gotten better and better as they went along. Fallout was probably one of the best action films I've seen this past decade, and since that film was that good, I can't even fathom how extremely excited I'll be to finally see this movie in full. The action, the stunts, the compelling stories, and even the characters are the many reasons I've thoroughly enjoyed this franchise. Can't wait to see the seventh installment. Number 14, Turning Red. Oh Pixar, how I love thee. Well, the element to get excited about for me is the fact it looks to be a brilliant coming of age story through the Mei Lin character. The emotional pulls when it comes to Pixar films are just how human these stories are, and how we can see ourselves through these characters because of similar experiences we've had in our youth. I love how something mythical like Mei Lin turning into a giant red panda will represent something deeper that she'll identify within herself, and something that we as the audience can connect with. Number 13, Black Adam. I have a strong feeling that this is going to be the role Dwayne The Rock Johnson was born to play. I just love seeing the passion he has for this project, and that this will be a role he'll commit to and see his strong presence on camera in such mind-blowing action scenes. Also, I'm dying to see the live action spin on the Justice Society, and through that, seeing the DC Cinematic Universe expand. I mean, Pierce Brosnan playing Doctor Fate? Does it get any better than that? So glad that this movie is finally releasing, and that as a fan of DC, we can see more characters like these on screen rather than the familiar icons. Number 12, Pinocchio. With this being a stop-motion adaptation of the classic story being co-directed by Guillermo del Toro, words cannot describe how utterly excited I am to see a director of his caliber direct this iteration of the Pinocchio story. In the past, I've described his films as being whimsically dark, and what I mean by that is that it's as if his films feel a bit like a fairy tale-like dream. But there are mature undertones, and the style is a bit more bleak and gothic. I can't wait to see how that's done with Pinocchio, and done in such a brilliant animation style. I can't wait to finally see the end product and be left in awe. Nuff said. Number 11, Thor Love and Thunder. Thor is probably my favorite of the original Avengers crew, and I think that's thanks to Taika Waititi directing Thor Ragnarok. Thor was already a great character, but I love how Taika brought this character to its most honest, and it was honestly one of the best things to come out of the MCU for me. I love Taika's style of humor and the colorful worlds he brings to the MCU, and I'm so excited he's returning to bring that breathtaking vision to Marvel once again. I'm excited to see how Thor's story will expand, now things are going to fall into place with Jane Foster returning, but this time as a female Thor? Absolutely bananas. Oh, and did I mention Beta Ray Bill is in this film too? So dang ready. Number 10, Evil Dead Rise. The Evil Dead is my all-time favorite horror franchise, and I'm so very excited to see another installment. Never thought it would happen at all, and while another horror sequel is a little higher on the list for me, I can't wait to see how this next installment will expand the world of Evil Dead and introduce a new band of characters fighting for their lives. Usually I'm not always in it for the blood and gore, though I don't always mind it. It can be really fun to see how creative the Deadites will appear in this film, and very fun how they'll be killed off by our new ensemble of characters. It may be formulaic in theory, but to see how things are done in this new movie is what I'm looking forward to, and I'm sure will be a welcome companion to the previous installments, and who knows how it may tie in. Just gonna have to wait and see. Number 9, Strange World. With Walt Disney Animation Studios, this film is honestly going to be another emotional and joyous experience. I love that this is going to be a sort of tribute to pulp adventures, and honestly the definition of an adventure with more imaginative environments. I've enjoyed the work of Don Hall from previous Disney movies he's worked on, and I know this is going to be another feast for the eyes for all of us Disney fans. Number 8, The Flash. The first multiverse movie on this list. But this will be the only one we have to look forward to in the DC Universe. I honestly love the fun personality Ezra Miller has brought to the role as Barry Allen, and I'm excited to see how his iteration of The Fastest Man Alive will lead his own film in what looks to be a loose adaptation of the Flashpoint arc. I'm excited to see how his role in the franchise will expand, and to finally see my first theatrical experience involving the DC Multiverse. And of course, seeing Michael Keaton back as Batman is going to be nothing short of one of the most hyped things in the history of geekdom. 
and two Batman in the same movie is something I never thought I'd see in live action, but that's one of the wonders of being a fan. Number 7, Knives Out 2. Ryan Johnson is one of my favorite filmmakers working in the industry today, and I was even a fan of his before he signed on to a galaxy far, far away. I love how emotionally invested I was in all his previous films, and with a film like Knives Out, I'm so glad a movie like that was made today. Such an iconic film in the mystery genre with an all-star cast in place, but the fact that this sequel is happening and this new cast is even looking to be just as fantastic is remarkable. I love that he's taking Craig's character to create more new mysteries and what I'm confident to say are going to be more thought-provoking and emotionally resonant thrillers to enjoy. Number 6, Halloween Ends. My most anticipated horror movie of the year. I'm a fan of the 1978 classic, I love the 2018 film for reinvigorating the franchise, and I even had fun with Halloween Kills for what it was. And with how the last film ended, I'm so excited to see what will possibly be one of the most compelling and cathartic horror sequels we're probably ever going to experience in the history of cinema. I love Jamie Lee Curtis and the passion she has for this franchise, and I'm so excited to see how this franchise will close and then leave behind a great track record for this rebooted horror series. Number 5, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part 1 that's right, part 1 to the sequel of Into the Spider-Verse is happening, folks. Into the Spider-Verse is in my top 5 comic book films of all time, and since that film was as creative and spectacularly made as it was, who knew a sequel could even top it? Well, judging by our first glimpse, I think it's safe to say this next installment is more than likely going to top that previous film. The animation is probably going to be even more game changing, and the fact I can experience these kinds of movies as a lover of comics and animation is honestly such a freaking joy. Being a fan of Spider-Man never felt so good. Number 4, Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. The Wizarding World has been one of my favorites ever since I was young, and I honestly really loved both Fantastic Beasts films. And because of the nearly three and a half year wait, I'm honestly excited to see where the story will go. I love the spectacle of this franchise and the fantastical elements that make me come back for more along with such delightful characters. I can't wait to see how this era of the Wizarding World will lay the groundwork for the Harry Potter series we know and love, and also make us rethink such iconic characters. I'm just dying to see how it will all pan out due to the repercussions of Crimes of Grindelwald, and how it will all culminate for the entire five-part series that'll bridge into Harry Potter. Number 3, Lightyear. Talk about revisiting your childhood, but in a new and awe-inspiring way. There just seems something so special about Pixar taking a new spin on one of its most beloved characters. I mean, this looks like a sci-fi epic that will remind us why we fell in love with this character in the Toy Story series but also make us fall in love with the character in a brand new fashion. The imagery looks so spectacular that it took me back to 2001 A Space Odyssey. It just looks like such an optimistic space movie that'll have top-notch sci-fi action, and I honestly can't wait to see how the world of Buzz Lightyear will expand in a way that we can take seriously, but also have a great time with. We have had a Buzz Lightyear animated series that I hope is added to Disney Plus to market this film, but to see this new Buzz Lightyear movie that takes advantage with this glorious cinematic scope is honestly such a treat as a fan of Toy Story, Pixar, animation, and heck, film in general. Number 2, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The multiverse is alive and well in the MCU, and even though there were plenty of surprises in Spider-Man No Way Home, I know this Doctor Strange sequel is going to spin that multiverse element even more out of control. As much as it's exciting to see all the surprises and heck, even more cameos from beloved pre-MCU Marvel movies and shows, I'm also excited to see the emotional journey that this is going to take Stephen Strange on, and how this is going to build him up as a hero, who's already been through so much. Also, I'm excited to see plot threads continue with Chiwetel Ejiofor as Mordo, and how that'll get resolved. Not to mention how Wanda Maximoff now as the Scarlet Witch is going to factor into the grand scheme of things. But to think that this film along with No Way Home is already bringing about Infinity War and Endgame levels of stakes is such incredible cinema to see in this day and age. The sheer magic and wonder that's found in the comic book superhero stories we read is honestly captured with such power and emotion on a grand cinematic level. 
Multiverse of Madness is going to be an experience. And my most anticipated film of 2022 is, number one, The Batman. Sure, there have been a lot of amazing Batman films that I've experienced in my lifetime, but the most excellent vision that Matt Reeves is bringing to life in such a magnificent fashion reminds me why I love Batman in the cinematic medium. Batman is honestly one of my favorite characters in the history of pop culture fiction, and the fact that we get to enjoy all the different iterations is one of the joys of being a Batman fan. And to think we're going to see Batman in Gotham City portrayed in a much grittier and raw vision compared to even the Christopher Nolan trilogy is absolutely stupendous. Robert Pattinson looks like he's born to play the role of Bruce Wayne himself, Paul Dano looks like an absolute menace as this chilling iteration of the Riddler that looks to be just as on par as Heath Ledger's Joker, the incredible presence that Colin Farrell is going to bring into the crime boss version of the Penguin I can't wait to finally see, and Zoe Kravitz, Selina Kyle Catwoman playing off of Pattinson's Batman is going to be a big surprise as well and capture the complicated relationship between the two that we know and love. The action looks game changing and the film noir aesthetic is already looking memorable. It looks like such a beautifully dark representation that's going to remind me why Batman stories can be so emotionally resonant to me. Watching Batman films is one of the reasons why I love movies, and to see another Batman film in this day and age that looks to capture that cinematic angle wonderfully is why I'm excited to go to a movie theater and thoroughly enjoy what's brought to the screen. Guys, this year looks like an absolute treat. And I can't even describe the excitement I have for all of these films, and not to mention ones that I didn't even make the cut, you know? I just couldn't put it on the list. I already have a list ready on my phone of more honorable mentions. I can't wait to experience all of these films so very much and watch them and talk about them. Cinema is alive and well, guys. Cinema is alive and well. So thank you all so much for watching, and if you haven't watched it yet, you can watch my favorite films of 2021 video, and also be on the lookout for my most anticipated videos for most anticipated TV and video games. So stick around for those. My social medias are going to flash on the screen right now. You can check them out in the description box below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, everyone.